Hi, my name is Richard Stevens. I'm with Memory Map, and I'm going to talk about developing a unified mobile and desktop app with Qt. So if you have questions, put them in the chat box. I will try to be around during the presentation to answer on the chat box. The Memory Map is a small company based in Ithaca, New York. Uh, we do GPS mapping for outdoor recreation. It's used with things like topo maps, uh, marine charts, and specialist uh, like four-wheel drive maps and things like that. It's um, it's been around since year 2000, so that's long before there was the iPhone. But we were doing mobile development using the Microsoft Palm PC, and we had a development environment using Visual Studio that um, that gave us a common code base between developing for Microsoft Windows and developing for the Palm PC. And so that was very nice to be able to uh, develop with one uh, environment. Um, but then along came the uh, the iPhone. And of course, you know, we had to quickly do an iPhone version of the app. And uh, a little while later, Android as well. Um, so we ended up with uh, three different code bases, obviously a certain amount of code in common, but uh, very difficult to maintain um the the all of the different apps working on on three different platforms um but the app was very successful and um for a while it was the top grossing app in australia top grossing navigation app in australia um it's been had very widely used in the uk um and uh, many thousands of of users worldwide but um, so after maintaining these three different apps for about a decade, I decided that we need to get back on a, uh, a unified code base using some cross-platform tools. And uh, we started using Qt. And uh, we now have a new app called uh, Memory Map for All, which is based on Qt and QML. And right now it's uh, using uh, Qt version 6.3.2. So it's... Uh, right up to date with the latest version. So I mentioned the Palm PC. So we've been doing uh, mobile and desktop development right from the very beginning. The way I like to think about it is not based on the operating system where you have uh, iOS and Android being mobile and Windows and Mac being desktop. It's more to do with the size of the screen and the type of input that you have with uh, a mobile device typically having touch screen input and a desktop being keyboard and mouse and uh, various other inputs. So we do have um, these major companies now that are uh, offering iPads that are uh, that are being sold as desktop workstations and um, uh, Windows devices that are used as tablets or, you know, these uh, convertible devices that change from a laptop to a tablet. We've got uh, quite a few uh, rugged Windows devices that are uh, have a touchscreen. And so there's definitely a need to have within one app, have it the, well, no matter what the operating system, to be able to use it as a mobile or as a desktop style of, and that, that's kind of the the style of use. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about the screen size because I think that's quite well understood from uh, a lot of web developers um, have figured out how to scale their device from a small screen to a large screen. I'm going to talk more about the, the input devices. But... Um, the reason we're doing this is because our customers are um, are traveling light. You know, they're going on these expeditions. They don't want to have to carry like a laptop as well as their phone. They want to be able to do their planning and their outdoor navigation using the same device. Um, the other motivation was to make life easy for, for us in the company. And so we only have to 
develop and maintain and support one app, uh, making things like the uh, user guide and all of the web uh, content only relating to one app. So this is a big payback for to make life easier for us too. But the other uh, motivation is actually the waste of resources that we see when if you have to buy a phone, a tablet, uh, and a laptop just to run different different apps. And everybody's experienced the frustration of, you know, you're trying to do something on your phone and the app is like a dumbed down version of what you can get on uh, on the desktop. And so you have to like get to get a desktop device to um, to do what you want to do. Um, but the phones these days have uh, ample compute power compared to a workstation a few years ago. There's really no reason why we can't have apps that work uh, fully functional on on all of the devices. And if you look at, for example, in the developing world, a lot of people there may only have a low-end uh, Android phone. And um, by allowing it to work with, say, a key keyboard and mouse, you can offer a full desktop experience using inexpensive hardware. So I think it's important for saving resources, especially in the third world. So let's take a look at uh, these input devices. Um, obviously, you've got uh, mouse and keyboard for the, um, the desktop environments and touchscreen for mobile. But there's also uh, a bunch that are in between, things like the trackpad that you see on every single laptop device. You've got um, the pen or pencil um, that's uh, used on a lot of tablets. Also, some you know, strange devices like the Apple Magic Mouse. And um, all of these devices have their own kind of characteristics. And if you all you want to do is like respond to a button click, then it's easy because the operating system already converts whatever input device you've got into like a mouse click. But if you want to have a more of an in-depth um, user interaction using these input devices, then, then there's a lot of nuances depending on the device. And um, so I'm going to demonstrate that using the Memory Map for All app. And um, first of all, this is using a mouse. And uh, we're going to uh, create a new route. And so with a mouse, you just click. And each click places a waypoint along your route. And so that's, uh, that's using the mouse. Now we do the same thing using the touch screen. And um, first, you'll notice that the menu is more spaced out. So that there's room for you to select a menu item with your finger. And then when you tap on the screen, it, uh, it creates these uh, two little buttons. And what that does is it allows you to move the waypoint because your finger is actually obscuring part of the screen. You can't see exactly where you're placing the waypoint. And so that little button is offset and allows you to, to put the waypoint exactly where you want it. And then the blue button gives you the, uh, the context menu. So here's the same thing using a pen. And um, so a pen is kind of like a touchscreen, but the, the nib of the pen is much smaller. So you can see accurately where you're placing the waypoint. But with a pen, it's possible to like draw the roots just with a stroke of the pen. And that is a very natural way to use that, uh, that device. So um, another thing we've done is using the list for selecting multiple objects in a list. And with a mouse, you've got uh, just like Microsoft Windows or Windows Explorer, you've got uh, things like shift click and control click to uh, to adjust your selection. And then right-click brings up the context menu. Um, but the way we do that for a touch screen is a little bit different. Um, again, you'll notice the items in the list are a little more spaced out. Um, so to do the multi-select, you have a, a special multi-select mode where clicking or tapping just adjusts the selection. And a long tap 
kind of a selects a range. And then uh, another long tap in the selection will bring up the context menu. Um, so what we've just seen is how the same app responds to different types of input in different ways so that um, it can take advantage of the advantage, the, the, the different uh, styles of input. And when you're using a mouse, it responds like a desktop app. And when you're using a touch screen, it responds like a mobile app. Um, so here's under the hood. This is how it all works. Um, we've got a, uh, in the uh, main part of the entry to the app, you've got a um, event filter. And what that does is it looks for all of the pointer events. And within the pointer event, there's a method to get the device type. And that's an enumeration that gives you a mouse, a touchpad, touchscreen, stylus, etc. cetera. Um, so what I do there is I, I just put that into a, a global variable so that other parts of the app, whether it's responding to a button or a uh, within the the list, it can it knows what the original event, what what the device type for the original event was. So um, that's how we do that. There is there are some ways to get it from QML, but um, they are depreciated now, and so this method using an event filter is the recommended way. Okay, so what we're trying to do is get respond to all of these different types of event with all of the different operating systems. And so this is the matrix that shows what's working. <laughs> and uh, um, it was uh, quite a struggle to get uh, to get some of these working. With the original, uh, we started off with Qt 6.2. Um, and, you know, the, the stylus or Apple Pencil wasn't working on any platform. The touchscreen wasn't working on Windows, etc. But um, the folk at Qt have made excellent progress on, on all of this. And um, right now we've got some issues with the right click on iOS and Android and um, with the mouse wheel on iOS. Everything else is working pretty much um, with the touchpad, what I'm trying to do is uh, I need to differentiate between a pinch gesture, which is for zooming the map, and uh, like a two finger scroll, which is for scrolling the map horizontally and vertically. And that works beautifully on the Mac, but uh, not on Windows or iOS. So there's still a little bit to do there. Um, but overall, I'm very encouraged by the uh, rate of progress that um, that we've made with uh, filling in this matrix. So in summary, um, I've shown you the memory map for all app. Uh, if you go to the memorymap.com website or to any of the app stores, you can download it and give it a try. Um, you'll see if you use it with a touch screen, then it performs as a mobile app. And if you use it with a mouse, it behaves as a desktop app or across all of the platforms. But uh, we have have in the last year thoroughly enjoyed using Qt. It's really taken me back to the early days where we were just using a unified environment with Microsoft Studio. And it's been very a very productive environment. And it's uh, been a huge game changer for memory map to have a unified code base that's uh, cross-platform on, on all of the different devices. So thank you for watching.